Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, we have another great guest. As our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, it's me sharing ideas and insights, best practices for building professional relationships and excelling at business networking. Occasionally, however, I will be interviewing what I call subject matter experts, authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists, people who are kind of on the ground floor of really making these relationships happen. Um, And these people kind of share their experiences, their knowledge and help, which in turn will help us build uh, relationships. Today, um, I have on with me all the way from the other side of the pond over in uh, the UK, uh, Harry Corbett, and he worked for 10 years on the London Foreign uh, Exchange with uh, institutional markets. Um, and then in 89, 1989, he made a transition to becoming a financial planner in the private sector. And then in 2010, he shifted again and he started a business forum called Intelligence, For- Intelligence Forums. And that has the focus on really kind of creating um, connections between the private sector and the and the public sector, um, businesses and government, local, um, as we would refer to in the states here, uh, city, state, uh, county governments in, in the UK, probably different federal, um, and just trying to trying to pull those people together to make things happen. Uh, Harry, welcome to the program. Very good to be here with you today, Frank. Thank you. You know, I was poking around on Intelligence Forum's website, and it's a treasure trove or just a a litany of just uh, a lot of people I don't know, but many people I do know. Uh, Brian Bashan has been somebody who's been on our program. Uh, Many of these people are from over in your neck of the woods over in in the UK. Um, Interesting, you know, how you've pulled these people together. I guess what I really want to get at is, you know, kind of how you pulled these people together, um, the things that come from this. Uh, well, I guess the first question is, you know, you spent years being a financial advisor. Why the change? And you know, what was the what was the inspiration? Frustration, pure okay. frustration. So obviously I'm speaking from a UK perspective and perhaps there's some commonality with what occurs in the States. But for me, you know, we spend a lot of time, and I'm sure it's the same in America, studying all sorts of things for um, exams and what have you for, to become a planner, financial planner, and which was, you know, to, to be honest with you, of course, one needed to know what one's talking about. But I think frustration that a lot of clients would come along in and um, here and there, and one would give advice. And so much of what one had learned was never put into practice it was it was often that people had a you know the need for something or perhaps an aspect of advice and uh, which was okay but then i think that what really did it for me and i'm sorry to spiel at you frank nah. uh, but what what really started to you know frustrate me was every saturday afternoon while people were playing golf or or doing fun things i'd I find that was an opportunity to go and read the financial news, sort of update myself on what had happened in the previous week in the markets or who was doing what and what have you. Perhaps, you know, reading about commodity prices or just general things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'd read this stuff and I'd think, oh, this is really interesting, you know, especially when we got into those years when China was absorbing so much Uh, materials and stuff was being shipped from Australia over to, you know, commodities, iron ore, coal, you name it, Mm -hmm. into China. And, you know, I'd read this stuff and I think, gosh, I'd so much like to meet that analyst that's saying this stuff or, or perhaps somebody that was involved in that story, but it never seemed to cross my desk during the week. And I think that 
what's the point I'm trying to make? In the end, I decided I actually really wanted to um, engage with some of these people one was reading about in the newspaper, but I couldn't quite decide how one did that because I wasn't that good. I didn't, ha I didn't have all these contacts suddenly appearing um, in my office or, or what have you. So um, I think in the end, the catalyst was that I decided to write to these people by hand and invite, mm. you know, when I, when I, in my frustration, decided to start intelligence forums, I hope I'm answering your questions. No, you are, slowly, yeah. But surely. So when I decided about 2007, when we were in the great financial crisis, and of course there was so much to read then of great interest and yeah. know, disastrous state of affairs, but interesting nonetheless. And, you know, I decided to actually bring in one or two people to speak that might be able to throw light on where we might be heading in the coming weeks, that perhaps there were economists. And it was an informal gathering of people that, you know, that's how it started, intelligence forums. And, you know, I, I suppose it was something that I really wanted to do because there's so many interesting people out there that have got such a, an interesting perspective on the world, whether it be in economics or, or business, and, and that's where it started, really. It was me fulfilling my frustrations, reading the newspaper and thinking I'd like to meet these people. In the end, all I could do is write to them. And I was lucky that one or two of them decided to come and speak. Does that help? No, that I mean, that helps. And it just then you, at some point you just decided, you know what? I'm taking more joy out of doing this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong, of course, with giving financial advice. That's that's something that's going to be needed, hopefully forevermore. But it, it was just me. I just had a, it had run its course and I wanted to do other things. Yeah, I think what the frustration was, I'm talking to you. You're, I don't know, but how many thousands of miles away from me this afternoon? Yeah, let's pretend it's 5,000 miles. Um, somebody with a better sense of geography will tell me precisely what it is. Yep. And I think the thing that I really wanted to do back in 2007 8 was everything I was doing was crossing my desk. It was people concerning people that had issues that were UK centric, often London centric, because they lived around where I lived. And I really wanted to bring in and, and sort of engage with people that had, had a more global perspective. Mm -hmm. so, so all these issues today, whether it's climate change, whatever it may be, to, to sort of access some intellect on these topics and, and bring them in to speak to normal people like me, just normal people and, and engage with an audience of people. I mean, originally it sounded like uh, just bringing in people to talk. I would imagine over time you've actually taken action on some of these things. I mean, it, it's it's like a snowball. Uh, it's just this is getting I, I sense this is getting bigger and bigger. You have these first few people and then it makes it easier to talk to more people and more people and more people. And literally, when you get on the website, it's pages and pages of just people that all have something powerful to say well i i think that um it's very kind of you to say that i i guess it's as true of everything we do isn't it that if you spend all day doing it um you know in the end i mean obviously not everybody that comes to speak at intelligence forums rings me up afterwards and says that was truly magnificent like you know please i want to engage with you again and again because they don't but right. some do some do and and you know so that's obviously if i could I would make them all want to, or make it so as they all wanted to. But um, one can only do one's best. And there's a lot of good competition out there. There's a lot of people doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm sure some of them far better than I'm doing. So really, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just being like what you do, Frank. You work on it 24-7. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's the same here. You're putting in your 10,000 hours. Yeah, no, I think that's a good way of looking at it. And uh, um, can you share any great successes, you know, connecting people? Yeah. And yeah, so so I will. I mean, and please forgive me for gratuitously dropping names. 
Oh, that's so, fair. No, so, please. So I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, the first caveat I put in on all that is when I do drop names, they're not, you know, they're not my best mates. I don't know them intimately. Um, I've just been privileged to have them in to speak. So what I didn't really make clear is when we started, I was leveraging on contacts that I had in the personal finance community. So perhaps insurance companies would lend an economist. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we could do a bit of that. But really, where the game started to change was about three, three or four years ago. And that's when I did start to write by personally to people. And, and, you know, there was a degree of therapy in that, Frank, because you know how hard business can be. Sure. It, it, it doesn't always go to plan and doesn't always go your way. And I think that I just reached the point where I needed to have a, a creative out, out, output somewhere. Something, mm -hmm. something that, you know, you know, maybe it was painting pictures, except I can't paint. So what I decided to do was actually write letters by hand. And I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing to these people that I really would like for them to come and speak. And, you know, it was so therapeutic putting pen to paper and sort of saying, dear Mr. Smith, would you like, dear Mrs. Smith, would you like to come in and speak? You know, we do this. Mm -hmm. We run this forum. And I just found it incredibly therapeutic. And then after about a month, I suddenly realized that that's all well and good, but nobody had actually replied to one of these letters yet. Right. And I was sitting in a um, cafe one afternoon up in the central London. And I had a member of the House of Lords who replied to my letter through, and he replied on email and said, look, I'll be delighted to do it. And within half an hour, the sec another one came in and that's when I realized it would work because, you know, after a month, suddenly two great results. And, you know, from that, that gave me the confidence to keep going. And, you know, we've been incredibly lucky. We've, we've had one or two um, really interesting people. Well, we've had a lot of very interesting people. And it really came from, from writing letters. And, and the curious thing is, writing those letters has actually provided one or two personal contacts where people, you know, we had a lunch the other day, my wife and myself, where a man that runs a charity that I wrote to, an economist that I wrote to, both came to lunch with their wives because they'd become, if you like, more personal contacts. Sure. So, so, so you know, that that's how I decided to do it. And of course, there's probably far better ways of doing it, but that's how I decided to do it. And it suited me. Did um, do some of these contacts now come from existing contacts? Can, I guess can you work through people and say, "Hey, Miss Smith, can you connect me to so and so?" Well, that's really interesting. Now, that's what I probably should be doing. But what I try, what I, what I do, rightly or wrongly, is if somebody comes in, replies to one of my invitations and comes in to speak, really what I'm interested in is them coming in to speak again. And I don't want to ask too much of them. Mm, okay. You know, I, I just want to hold, if I can, say, will you come back? Um, which makes it difficult for some of our members because there's sometimes they want to really reach out and connect. To which I say, look, I don't know these people intimately. On the whole, I don't. Right. They, they've given up their time to come and speak. So what I would advocate you do is reach out to them in LinkedIn and say you were at the same meeting today. Um, and, you know, maybe that's a, a, that's how I how how I approach that, really. So I don't ask too much of them. OK. And that's fair. And, and, that, and you know, that I'm probably missing a trick, but that's how I run it. Well, you know, I you know, again, I think looking at your website. If I get a letter from you and looking at your website, I'm like, okay, this is not just, a, this is a maybe an American term, Johnny come lately, um, that's d putting something together. I mean, you've, you know, you've got a track record here. So it's whether you're intentionally using it or not, you're kind of, you're building a treasure, a treasure trove of trust uh, for people. 
um, that you're reaching out to. And it sounds like there's even an opportunity. I mean, if I were to come to one of your forums, um, well, I guess but you are, Frank. You come to speak next year. Yeah, February. I think it's fe- February 23rd, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, but I think part of the part of the opportunity there is getting to meet the other audience, the other participants. And you're right. You're right. So what we're doing is two things. And one, you, you, you. I mean, I'm sure one, you do excellently yourself. I mean, that's why I'm here. But so the two things we're looking to achieve is, or are, one, yes, interesting people coming in to speak, but also that the audience can connect with each other. So it started as a pure networking business. It did start as that. And then it morphed into having an end that was a, like a forum, a business forum, where we, we have people coming in to give inf- interesting information. Um, today, I would say it's a combination of the two. And, and I always have to be very sensitive to that because, you know, our members do need to actually further their connections. So, yes, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's the... So often people look at the the person who's at the pinnacle, your presenters in this situation, and say, that person will change my world. I need to connect with that person. And everybody is really trying to connect with that person. And really, the the, the better play are the other people. Um, You're right. You're you right. Know, who, are, who are there to, who are, who have the same interests you do, but they're from another part of the UK or another part of Europe or another part of the world that they can really uh, take advantage of. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know what your um, view on this is, but h- how would you say it works best? If somebody was attending, for example, now I'm turning the tables and interviewing you, Frank, which is All right. really naughty, <laughs> but, but, but just to ask you a question. So somebody comes to one of your um, forums, events, are they, would they be better served, do you think, looking for a long-term collaboration or two? Or do you think it's more about meeting five or six people and, and hoping for the best? Which, what, what, how does it work, do you think, best? Well, I think, I, I believe that it's all driven on relationships. And there's an inverse relationship to the to the number of relationships you have, an inverse correlation, number of relationships and the meaningfulness of the relationship. You're married, you have one wife, right? It would be, it would be terribly complicated to have two. Um, I don't think, I don't think I'd get one if I wanted one anyway, I've right. way past my best. Yeah. <laughs> <The thing is. laughs> but you see, but you see what I'm saying? And so, yeah. so often people try to have these very uh, insignificant connections with lots of people and I don't think it works. I think we're best to find individuals that resonate with us that care about us. that are willing to support us in the way we're willing to support them. That's the way I look at it. And yeah, no, I think you're, I think they're spot on. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the people, the person who introduced us, Simon Towns, um, you know, he's, he resonates with us. He tries to help people. He knows that we're, Try helping people. Um, and then there are other people along the way that I'm connected with. And it's, you know, the call is, the call is very one-sided, right? This is what I have. And this is how I think you can help me. Um, and uh, it's not that I'm not interested in helping people, but it's just, it's not as, I'm not, it's as, not as alluring. It's no. not as alluring, is it? Yeah. Because they're not really asking for a relationship. They're asking for <laughs> a right. handout. Yeah, no. And yeah, that's it. And, and some of them offer to pay, which, um, well, I suppose that's a good start. That's a, well, that's it, a, is, that's a it is, it is what, what I always tell people is, is what I, you know, the best thing you can do is care about my hopes and dreams. Like I'm, you want me to care about yours and money, money is just a quick way to get rid of me. That, you know, because yeah, I, a lot- I mean, I mean, what you want is people surely to join your membership. So when yeah. they're offering money, that's the money you want, right? I want, I want to build yeah. a long-term sort of a thing. So, yeah. um, 
but no, I think to your point, it's, you know, it's all about the relationships and the relationships you can have. And, uh, you know, I, you know, again, the people who are at your forums, the, the person speaking is in my mind, as far as it, from a networking standpoint, the person speaking is less important than the people who are there um, because they can, they can connect you in a whole lot of different ways. So, yes, yes, quite. So, but, but, but you know, we, we, we try and, we try and do, I suppose, the two, an interesting talk. And then if people meet people along the way, of course, the virtual world, uh, I'm not about to complain about it. It's magnificent that we can have this meeting today. Yeah. You're all that way away. And, you know, when I add it up, it, it saves so much time if you're looking at local meetings. And I suspect, like yourself, I don't know, I shouldn't speak for your business, but we'll certainly be doing both versions. Yes. When we're, you know, and I suspect you are too. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just another, uh, it's just another weapon in the arsenal, uh, if you yeah. will. So, you know, things we can do. And I think history has a long, a long litany of these moments. The telegraph was one of these moments, right? We still, you know, we still went and talked to the neighbors. We still had town meetings, you know, and telephone, you know, same sort of thing fax machine it's just it, this has just made it easier to connect further and faster that's all but we still need those relationships um, yeah we do really we what do. it boils down to um so i guess switching gears here as we kind of wrap up w w listening audience how could they help you um is there somebody out there you're you know you're well i guess you write letters trying to connect with people and that's great no i i mean obviously um that's very very kind of you to offer any help at all that's really appreciated it's it's very kind of you and thank you also i should say for having me on this interview today it's really appreciated so i think that intelligence forums what they would like to do one of the things we'd like to do is just like you're coming in to speak next year right we're not a, we're not about to set up a forum in america i mean we've got enough on our plate with a very small team um with what we're doing here but we will occasionally have a forum from America giving perspective on what people are doing out there. You know, that great economy, that great democracy. My wife's American, so I'm a big fan. Thank you. And, <laughs> and, and what, what we're interested, you know, that old relationship. So we need to be um, in America twice a year at least and so if anybody has anything interesting that they think they might want to talk about um or that we should know about over here we should be glad to hear it well and what i'm going to do uh harry is i'm going to put uh the intelligence forums website it's intelligence-forums.com i will put that in the show notes um and i encourage our listeners to go out and and, and just look at it um, and That's kind a, of you, yeah. A lot of the names you won't recognize, um, no. and and that's okay. Um, but you know, know that there's substance behind all of these people, and uh, you know, and again, um, you know, I'm I, I don't to, to, to just to ask one last thing or of you, Frank, that yeah. you know, the climate change issues. So yeah. it might be something sensitive to that because, it, you know, I turn the television on here. It's on every day. And I'm, I know I know that you've got your challenges out there with it. And, um, yeah. You'll have a lot of perspectives on that one. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's a well, you've got my wheels turning uh, because I do know lots of people, um, lots of people with interesting things to say, in, in, interesting backgrounds and uh um, I have no problem kind of floating them out to you and saying, hey, what do you think? Um, and I don't think anybody's feelings are hurt if it's, you know, that doesn't fit or, hey, wow, that's great. Um, so, Well, that's that's really kind. And can I just say thank you so much for this interview? It's been really appreciated. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. 
Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.